The Essential Six Stuff by Ronald Kelly. Now, this was a collection of short stories sent to me as an advanced reader copy by Silver Shamrock Publishing, so I want to say thank you to those guys. Anyway, what we have here is a collection of, this is basically all of the six stuff that Ronald Kelly has put out. In other words, what is this is, and I'll, I'm going to go around the world with this, I don't mean to, but back in the late 80s and early 90s, as explained in the foreword to the book, there was a thing known as the splatter punk movement, okay? So you had all these different different authors, uh, Ronald Kelly, uh, you had Clive Barker, David J. Shaw, uh, just to name a few, and it was kind of an unofficial contest between these guys uh, to see who could kind of gr outgross the other as far as uh, gore, as far as just like sick shit, okay? And this is Ronald Kelly's uh, contribution to that. Now, like I said, this comprises three separate books. The first one is, of course, called Sick Stuff. Uh, the next one, let me get over here to the contents, is More Sick Stuff. And then finally, Even Sicker Stuff. And these are short stories. Now, that being said, I am not the best person in the world to review short story collections. I think it's because... For one thing, with short stories, you don't have memorable characters, so to speak. You have more memorable stories and situations. And this one works, I give it three and a half stars. Uh, it's hit and miss like a lot of short story collections. Most of it is hit. I really enjoyed a lot of these stories. Some of them I didn't quite so much. I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these, the sick stuff, more sick stuff, and even sicker stuff. And what I will do is I'm going to pick out some of the stories that I enjoyed from each one of those volumes or collections, so to speak. Excuse me. So for that being said, with that, uh, and I'm trying to remember the, the plots on some of these stories too, so it may have to come to me for a minute here. Uh, for six stuff, one of my liked was uh, where is the one? I gotta remember it because I gotta figure out that um, as soon as I see the beginning of it, I'll know what it is. I just can't remember the exact title of it. So let's see. Uh, da, 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 not that one. Uh, yeah, here we go. Mass appeal. This is about a kid that. Uh, his goal is to be a mass murderer. That's his goal, okay? That's sick enough as it is. But he starts, he has these dreams where he is like with Vlad the Impaler. Uh, whenever Vlad is like sitting there eating dinner with all the impaled bodies and stuff. Uh, and Vlad's just talking to him like he's one of his best friends. Uh, then he has one where he's with um, Hitler. Yeah, Hitler. So trigger warning, you know, and I'll get to the trigger warnings part in just a minute, but yeah, trigger there. Uh, but yeah, he's like watching people get, um, you know, wa you know, watching uh, the prisoners, uh, the concentration camp prisoners get uh, gassed, you know, and again, him and Hitler are just having a great old time. Really disturbing story, you know, and and I really think to me, I don't know if this was an original, because some of the stories in this are actually original to this volume. So I'm going to look on here. Mass Appeal, yes, original to this collection, okay? Uh, to me, Mass Appeal is like, it kind of speaks to nowadays to who kids choose nowadays as their heroes. They don't just have like Superman and Batman and, you know, they, they've got horror movie characters as heroes, you know, um... And criminals and stuff. Yeah, even those are heroes. So yeah, that one there is one of my favorites. So let's go on. What do we got next? We got from the more sick stuff. And I hate to keep adjusting or opening the pages here. I lost the count there. Uh, let me see. Oh, more sick stuff. Oh, the one. Yeah, the one. My favorite in that one is the night. Or is it the day? Did I say the day or is it the night? It's got to be the day. It is the day UPS brought zombies and it's about this woman and she's married she's getting ready to celebrate her uh, anniversary and she orders what she thinks is a cookbook uh from this website and it turns out to be 
because she wants to make this recipe for her husband. I think her husband is like Hungarian or something. I can't remember. But she wants to make this special recipe for her husband. What she gets instead is this book that is very similar to the Necronomicon from the Evil Dead movies. And her husband is just enthralled with this book because it's got all these fancy languages that he's never seen. And he reads from it. And he basically starts the zombie apocalypse. So during the anniversary party, you've got all of these people in the house trying to fight off zombies. Uh, in fact, it's funny because the book, the, the story is hilarious. Um, one of the characters is an old lady. It's the mother, I think, of the, uh, of the, the groom or the, or the husband. And man, she's just going through these zombies with a chainsaw. I mean, she's just like, Leatherface has nothing on her. You know, Rick Grimes has nothing on this old lady. Nothing. Uh, Daryl Dixon, forget it. Nothing, okay? And also, uh, excuse me, one of the characters picks up a copy of Stephen King's, mm, excuse me, I've got a little cough there. Mm, ah, she picks up a copy of the uncut edition of Stephen King's The Stand and just clocks the zombie upside of the head and then proceeds to beat his head in with this volume. And I always thought to myself, you know what? And I know there's some Stephen King fans out there that if they hear me talking about lists like this, they're going to think I'm committing blasphemy. But I think if you want a perfect zombie killing weapon, get a copy of It and get a copy of The Stand, uncut, okay? Get some duct tape and tape all around it so it doesn't fly open. All around each copy so it doesn't fly open. Just reinforce that sucker real good, both of them, all right? Then get some duct tape and tape it all, tape the books to where they're flat in your hands like this. Then when you get a zombie getting real close, just take both volumes of those books and bah, right like that, you're going to kill them. You're going to bust your heads wide open, man. Because, you know, I swear, if you drop one of those books on your foot, you're going to break your foot. Anyway, that being said, it's a hilarious story. There's even one point where she calls Brian Keene because she pretty well sees Brian, author Brian King, Keene because she pretty well sees King, King, Keene as the... Uh, king of the zombie horror novel writers, all right? And she's asking him, how do you kill a zombie? He's like, I don't know. How do you kill a zombie? He thinks she's joking. The conversation is hilarious. The story is hilarious. It's bloody. It's gory. It's effing fun, okay? All right. Next up. Here we go. Uh, from the last volume. From the last volume. Let me find it here. Uh, even sicker stuff. Oh, wow. This is a hard one here. I... You know what? I am going to go with Eating Hardy. And this one is a revenge tale. It's about this guy that you kind of get, when you start reading it, and you some of the things he says, you realize that something is different about this guy. Okay? Well, he sees this blonde-haired woman on the side of the road, and her, she's having car trouble. So he pulls over to, to help her. Um... Uh, and when I say help her, there may be a little bit more connotation of that. Uh, anyway, so she turns around and he's like, wait, no, you're dead. You know, I killed you or, you know, something like along that line. So anyway, he wakes up and he's in hospital or in the hospital. I'm not British. British people say in hospital, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, cut out the thieves and you're getting rid of the middleman anyway. But he wakes up, and the doctor is this uh, nurse or this uh, woman, and she's like, "Well, you had a terrible accident. Don't you remember anything?" She keeps him sedated. I'm not going to go any further with it because it's pretty freaking. Uh, it's some. It's some. Amer if you ever saw American Mary, you'll know what I'm getting at. Okay, it's some American Mary shit, is what it is. Uh, so yeah, those are three stories that I really. Really loved this in this collection. Most of the stories I liked a hell of a lot. Like I said, a few clunkers are just they just didn't. I won't say they're clunkers. I'm not going to say they're bad. They just didn't work for me. All right, they may work for you. Anyway, that being said, this is my review of the Essential Six stuff by Ronald Kelly. This is only the second thing I've read by Ronald Kelly. The first thing I read was Undertaker's Moon. I do intend to read more Ronald Kelly because I like the guy. He's really excellent, and he sets his stories in the in the South, which is where I'm from. So that's pretty cool, right there. Anyway, three and a half stars. 
excellent collection. I recommend it. Thank you guys for watching and have a great evening. Good night.